Due to popular demand, I have decided today I will plunge into the world that it is off the Sims Story series. Initially known as The Sims 2 Stories, they are a series of three games released between 2007 and 2008 using a modified version of The Sims 2 game engine which optimised being able to play it on wiki systems i.e. laptops or our shite childhood computers. Today I will be starting at the very beginning with The Sims Life Stories. Developed by Maxis and EA, it was released in February 2007. This game contains a free play classic mode with open ended gameplay, as well as featuring two predefined scenarios. In each scenario, we follow one of two protagonists, Riley Harlow and Vincent Moore. So, no poo antics today, sorry. However, we will carry the spirit of poo with us in our hearts. One is tasked with completing various goals of the character's life and to follow the story through to its completion. So this is your spoiler alert and enough faffing about. On with the game! We are greeted into the game with an opening of sorts. Pop punk, eat your heart out. All of a sudden, with seeing this loading screen, I'm transported back into my childhood dining room, sitting at the family computer, waiting for The Sims 2 to load. Ah, bliss. Starting with Riley's story, mainly because Vincent's is locked and I don't really want to play on free play mode. This is Riley's story thus far. Riley Harlow had been living in Sim City all her life until she lost her job. Facing eviction, Riley turned to the one person she could count on, her aunt Sharon. Sharon had always been kind enough to help Riley out in a pinch. So Riley arranged to stay at her aunt's house in the suburb of Four Corners until she was back on her feet. One is asked if I would like to play on a tutorial. No thanks mate. Here she is, all of the Harlow family. We exit a taxi and here we are. Welcome to Riley's story. Here you will play the story of Riley, who has moved from Sim City to stay at her aunt's Sharon's house. I'm pretty sure we've already been told this. We'll be given rewards from other Sims, Oh, how exciting. And don't forget your Sims' needs. The Sims are in 3D. Holy shit, spin that mouse wheel, bitch. The family journal, that's something for in the scrapbook. Keeping track of all our goals, power wants, generational goals. Okay. Oh, am I ready to begin? I'm not sure, guys. I'm, I'm actually kind of nervous. It's been some time since I played a Sims game of this sort. However, we'll power on. One is greeted by this bitch who I'm assuming is good old Aunt Shazza. Then I'm told below you will find the story goal that needs to be completed for the story to continue. This goal is to hug your aunt. Try experimenting with other interactions. I give Aunt Shazza a big fat hug, then she frigs off after telling me I have the house to myself. You know what that means? <laughs> Time to dance. I have a gander at some of the Riley info that we have to hand. Riley has moved into four corners to meet new people, seek excitement and perhaps find love. I look at her turn-ons, brown and black hair, and her turn-off, <laughs> a clothes peg. Interesting. I make some scram for our Riley. And look, what's going on with this shadow? Sometimes you have a shadow following you, sometimes it's a Black ominous rectangle in it. Scranomatopoeia consumed. Riley would like to get out of her clothes, however, not for sexy reasons, as the dirty mare has been wearing them since she left Sim City. Let's see what good old Aunt Shazza has in a wardrobe. With a click of the armoire, one now finds themselves in an evening gown. Oh, here we go. Riley needs a little makeover. I give her the old prudence magic and engulfed in the spirit of our beloved Pooh, and voila, look at her now. She is Ruth Servington the second. Oh, what's this? The welcome wagon has arrived, spoiling my fun. What the hell? I greet this guy who I was, just, uh, who I thought was just called Smith, and receive my Prezi. Ah yes, an eclectic coffee maker, just what the doctor ordered. One scopes the room. That's something you do at parties, isn't it? We scope the room. And Mickey, aka Smith, is hot. A wooga boy oink. After boogieing on down with our Mickey, and you know what? He's a really nice guy. I don't want to rush it. However, one must tickle the gent to see how he reacts. 
and we enjoyed it. We retired to the drawing room to relax and recuperate with our Mickey for the evening. Riley be pondering over her cup of coffee and everyone swooning over Mickey, but she's had a swell time at her shindig, all in all. However, she's disassociating now at the soiree. Social battery depleted, so once I cook everyone food, I hit the hay. My first day in Four Corners was both exciting and unsettling. First, my crazy aunt decides to get up and go not five minutes after I arrive. After freshening up a bit, I met a few of the locals. Fiona's nice, but come on an infomercial coffee machine, at least Mickey is easy on the eyes. I wonder if he's seeing anyone? I don't know what to think about that Agora. She's nice, but in a really fake kind of way. Anyway, I had fun. Got a little friendly with Mickey, if you can believe that. It's getting late, so I should turn in. Shouldn't Aunt Sharon be back by now? Hmm, where is that Shazza of ours? So, attempting to repair the bath, Riley suddenly decides, you know what? I want a job. So I look for a job on three separate occasions. And while it turns out that a job on the old entertainment career path is my only choice, Riley then happens upon an email from Aran. Apparently she's gone to help out an old friend. I'll be back in a few days. You know what? How rude. All I did was hug her and she abruptly frigged off. Riley then ponders where Sharon keeps her mirror balls and spotlights. Huh? Oh, having the house all to myself isn't that exciting. I know, I'll invite that devilishly handsome Mickey Smith over. Hmm. I like your thinking, Riley, you slag. The creative juices be flowing, and one gets an unexpected call. Oh, it's Mickey. He's got a taste of the old Riley Nate here and can't get enough. He was so ready to come over that I didn't even get a chance to change into the unmentionables. But he's bought that binge Agora with him. Ugh. Now I get changed into something say much more comfortable. And with all that said and done, it's time to hit on Mickey Smith. And why is flirting so hard, may I ask? We've finally developed our flirting relationship to a level much higher that is required to become optimum hitter honora. We hit on him. And bloody Agora comes and points at me. How dare she? In my aunt's own house. As soon as I pluck up the courage, I'll shove her ugly butt out. But... As one pulled an all-nighter, the courage was never plucked, and she left on her own accord. Aunt Sharon hasn't returned, but she did email to me to let me know she'd be out for a few days. I wonder who she's staying with. Fortunately, I wasn't very lonely because Mickey came over. Unfortunately, so did Agora. She got in my face just because I was being friendly to Mickey. Well, not just friendly. Anyway. I showed her that I'm not going to be pushed around, stupid cow. Exiting the carpool after a hard day of grinding the organ, I collapse like the true wage cook I am. I awaken, miserable and uncomfy, and decide to call some red-headed bitch. She happens to mention Dylan Kincaid, my old flame from high school, is in town. Just when I had my new flame, Mickey, old flame comes along and throws me off. There's just too many flames that my kitchen spontaneously set ablaze. We've got to get Dylan off the mind, so needs must. We'll invite Mickey for a date at Starlight Cafe. I didn't get this bit and Riley wouldn't go home, but eventually we invite our Mickey for the date. Maybe Mickey would perhaps like to play chess with me. I was captain of the high school chess team, so I'll go easy on him. Shut up! What? We're supposed to be on a date. Riley be like, oh, he's playing chess like checkers. Oh, shut up, Riley. You snob. You're a snob. They're the same game. I'm sure Mickey's a man of culture. He'd rather be playing classic board game Downfall. Riley goes on to say that the food smells good. I best get a seat before I start slobbering all over him. Uh, from hunger, of course. Makes me think of maybe eating a delicious Cadbury's Whisper. He always gets a slobber from me. Anyway, did Mickey just gag at me? I asked the servant for the chef's choice. Of course, compliments to the chef and all. And we be scranning now. Dinner was delicious and Riley is ready and raring to go for a scranalicious dessert a la Mickey style. It will really cap off a wonderful date. Mickey, stop playing chess so we can kiss. It's getting late. But lucky for us, it's not a school night. So once I've completed my pissing, we engage in a snogalicious cutscene. and receive a rose. Riley states she can't even remember what's his face name now. Dylan? He was called Dylan. 
I had a wonderful date with Mickey. We went to Starlight Cafe where we enjoyed a beautiful afternoon. We played some chess and had a meal at the restaurant. Afterwards, Mickey treated me to dessert, French style. Hee <laughs> hee. What, Michael Jackson? I return home shortly after my shenanigans with Mickey and state, Oh, someone catch me before I faint. I know everyone. Look, I've unlocked Vincent's story, but no, I'm not ready yet. I've got to complete this one. Oh, he's eager. Mickey's already called me following our romantic encounter last night, so I treat myself to a new outfit. I deserve it after all. Oh, and what's this? Old flame Dylan rings me. They heard from a mutual friend that I was in town and they're going to come over and have dinner. Um, excuse me, do I have to make it? I really can't be arsed. Oh, hearing his voice brought back a lot of memories. Well, I guess that means it's time to study cooking in the studying chair. <laughs> and everyone, she is not studying. She is making sure that pesky maid is doing a bloody job. She's kind of weird. I don't really like Riley. Ah, paprika, she exclaims. I get it now. I hope Dylan is ready for a culinary tour de force. And she do be speaking facts. I prepare myself to see the old flame, and here he is, and gives me a kiss. Oh, I say, oh, I forgot how good he was at kissing. What if I gave him, say, a real romantic kiss? But my phone is also ringing. <laughs> of course, it's Mickey. Sorry, love, but I have to play with fire and kiss my old flame. Call me an arsonist, cause arse. Riley says that it was nice, but something is bothering her. Poor old Mickey, an evil, evil Riley. However, it's almost as if I'm being compelled to complete this date. I try and serve the food, however, it's not serving. It's the opposite of serving, evil serving. So I have to invite Dylan over again to serve him with great difficulty. But we persevere and it was an excellent granolicious meal, even if I do say so myself. Oh, and we're gonna get Dylan to carry us for some reason. And for making him carry us, he gives us a mirror Mirror, mirror on the wall, who served the most of all? Today was a little strange, what with my ex-boyfriend Dylan Kincaid dropping in for a visit. He's a really nice guy, but I wonder how much he's changed since high school. I really need to cool it with him because I don't want to damage anything with Mickey. On the plus side, I learned what paprika is. I'm still trying to paint, but my bloody phone keeps on ringing. Oh, it's new flame Mickey wanting to hang out in Old Grove Park. Why not, love? We go and Mickey ain't here yet, but it's fine. It gives me time to ponder the situation that's going on here. Oh, and some bitch comes up to me talking shy about Dylan. <laughs> Piss off. Oh, Mickey's finally here. What time do you call this? He's brought hot dogs and some hamburgs for grilling, but he has a phobia of grills. But then the cheeky bastard asks me if I would mind. Would I mind? Yeah, I do mind. However, I'll just put some burgers, I guess. And I'm just serving everyone now, aren't I? Ultimately, while scranning a burger, I decide that Mickey is the man I want. Nice, sincere, cuddly, perhaps. I wonder how he'd like a visit from the tickle troll. <laughs> Love, I'm almost certain you've tickled him before. She's kind of weird, I'm not going to lie. Oh, and he's kind of weird too because he liked it. Wait a minute, is this Ashley checking out my mans? Oh my god, I've been asked to be in his girlfriend. Oh, this is all happening so fast. I hope Mickey doesn't think I'm too aggressive if I am. Um, try a little make-out session with him. After subsequent kisses, we eventually can make out with Mickey. It's kind of cool how relationships work like that. Today was probably the best one so far in Four Corners. Mickey invited me out for a romantic picnic at the park and asked to be his girlfriend. It's only been a few days, but I know he's the guy I'm destined to be with. Oh, everything seems so right. I hope nothing changes. I head home. This one's going in the diary. Suddenly, Riley starts moaning about all the fine dining that she's been doing recently and how unfit she's getting. Oh, where was you? I will invite my new boyfriend to the gym. So after gagging at the vegetation outside, I'm quite amused by all these blokes and at the gym looking weird in their identical tracksuits. Is this a squid game? As soon as I've earned my singular body point, I hit the hottie tea. Mickey joins me and this bitch that I'm hanging out with. <laughs> oh my god. Fuck's sake. Dylan's here. What's Dylan doing here, the bastard? And wait a minute. Oh my god. He's coming to the hottie tea. Everyone, 
what the hell, he's getting into the hotty tea. Then the bloody bastard drops me in it. He's like, I had a great time the other night. How about I come over for the second course? Oh, that's it. We all vacate the hotty tea to spectate the fight. Mickey be like, oh, Agora was right. You're a hussy. A hussy? I'm not a hussy. I don't even know what to think right now. All I want to do is go home. Sob. Everything was going so well. I wish Mickey would let me explain, but he was so mad. I don't know what to do now. I return home to surprise of some sorts. What in the world? How did Dylan get inside? Well, I could use the company since Mickey left. The cheeky bastard is on my bed, relaxing. Ready to proposition me? What the hell? <laughs> What's going on? This is very presumptuous. Oh, he's telling me all these sweet nothings. There's not been a day that I haven't thought of you since high school. <laughs> Mate, why are you in my house? But Riley, she's such a slag. I know I just got out of a relationship, but Dylan says he's here for me. And I just need that right now. I can't help that I'm so charming. Oh, the difference between Pooh and Riley are just astronomical. Anyway, I guess that Dylan, the dickhead, is just staying at my house now. Whilst he's here, I'll put him to good use. As I was confused of, to, by the goal, I'm so charming alongside Dylan and a shamrock of sorts. And well, we end up reluctantly woohooing with him. And nothing happens, and it turns out that we were only supposed to charm him. Oh, oh well. Riley comes to the ultimate conclusion that he is a tender guy and deserves a tender kiss. Ah yes, very tender, Riley, you stupid bitch. Look, he's leaving like the rest of them. What's this bloke going on about? He's like, I want to live in four corners. What's even going on? However, I think I'm up for a patented Dylan and Riley makeout session. Once we have completed the making of the out, he gives me a present, then ups and leaves. Oh Riley, you know how to pick them. Dylan's always been there for me during hard times. I'm so glad he's here with me now. Although I shouldn't get too attached, I've been hurt by him before. Not to mention what happened with Mickey. Oh, Mickey. Um, guys, I think she misses Mickey. Oh my god, this ginger bitch calls me and informs me that Mickey is getting married to that Agora bitch. What the actual hell? What about our Riley? You know what? That calls for me to get on the phone and call Dylan to inquire if he will buy me a new dress, or perhaps four. However, he has to go to work, so I head to the boutique alone, and I guess we try on some outfits. Well, 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 look who's here, Dylan, and he's all over Ashley like a cheap suit. <laughs> what does that mean? I'd be going to regret that he ever came crawling back into my life. No one messes with Riley Harlow, bitch. Riley then initiates a battle of the old fisty cuffs, and after successfully beating the bastard, he says, You swear word, you have no idea how good you had it with me. You're gonna get it, Riley, and that whining aunt of yours. <laughs> um, fuck you, mate. And it's kind of weird how he keeps on mentioning um, my aunt. How wonderful and, and or convenient. He's dropped 2,000 simoleons. Lovely jubbly. We spend it all on a shopping spree. <laughs> Very sly. Oh, Mickey, please not here. My day's bad enough without having me having to see the love of my life with Agora the mule-faced woman. A mule-faced woman, okay. It was foolish enough to get involved with the sleaze bucket. Yes, sleaze bucket. It's Dylan. <laughs> it's time for me to go home. That two-timing scoundrel. I almost believed him too. Well, no more. At least I got a few teeth out of him. This makes the sting from losing Mickey even more painful though. What I'd give to have Mickey back. At least I got a few teeth out of him. At least I got a few teeth out of him. What is she, the tooth fairy? I can't let things end this way. I have to do everything in my power to restore what Mickey and I had together. No matter what. So I'm inviting Mickey over and of course the chronically unemployed bastard is available. Subsequent to my many smooches and attempting to bed him, he gifts me a dis teddy bear or something um, it's all a bit kind of weird i will always cherish everything i had with mickey he deserves a better girl than me too bad agora doesn't fit the bill i'm happy we were able to reconcile partly i just hope one day he will be able to forgive me i soak off the day thus far it's been a tough one 
And what's this? Dylan outside kicking my trash can and wailing. You and your run have cost me everything. What is this bloke talking about? Oh my God, here's the police now. And here's Aunt Shazza as well saying, here's the man who kidnapped me. What? Dylan? Why is Dylan now fighting the police, may I ask? Um, booking boys? Oh, I'm told. Oh, Mr. Kincaid won't be kicking any trash cans over where he's going. Wow, this is unexpected. But I deserve some kip now, don't I? Turns out that Dylan locked Shazza in the basement, planned to marry me, and then do away with both of us and keep the money for him and his accomplice. He even sent an email in her name. She used her old army training to escape and even swiped his projection TV as a way of thanking him. Oh, isn't that nice? Too bad that uglyish woman Dylan was conspiring with isn't here. Uglyish woman? Dylan was conspiring with? There's only one uglyish woman I know and that's Agora. I must warn Mickey. I can't believe it. Dylan and Agora were in cahoots with each other and planned on getting rid of both myself and Aunt Sharon. There's no time to talk though. I have to go and stop Mickey from marrying Agora. With no time to waste, I hastily call that ginger bitch to find out where the ceremony is being held. It must be one of our five community lots and of course it's Old Grove Gardens. Stop the wedding! I spill the tea to old Mickey and, oh I'm sorry Mickey, are we, um, are we keeping you up? Now is the time we've been waiting for, the big face off between Riley and Agora. <laughs> and yeah, that was certainly something. Now Agora takes on the overseer of justice bloke man in, well, the same manner. Agora is certainly a force to be reckoned with. Mickey leaps into my arms and I guess we're going to be together now. We take him into a sweet warm embrace and kiss him and a cutscene of him proposing to us. We make our way to the underneath of the arch to begin the ceremony of matrimony. Another cutscene plays and my engagement ring becomes the ring of the wedding variety. And while Mickey has indeed joined the family and brought 43,494 simoleons, along with him for the ride. A limo pulls up and Mickey states, let's get out of here. I hope you like the Samaican Islands. Um, what did you just call me? One week later, the first thing we did after landing was drop off our luggage at the hotel and hit the beach. I finally got to wear the cute shirt I made with the coconut and the dental floss without feeling all weird about it. The only problem was that it seemed to attract birds and insects, but at least we got a lot of beautiful pictures. A few days after we arrived, we found the beautiful secluded lagoon. We wanted to stay there the entire afternoon, but Mickey accidentally stepped on a rockfish. Although the rockfish didn't see it that way, the good news is the hospital staff here are actually quite friendly. The night before we left, we went to this little club with an enormous bubble blower in the middle of the floor and exactly where we went after that was kind of a blur. Good news is that the local law enforcement are really friendly and they said they send us the photos. We had a wonderful time here in the Samaican Islands and hope to come back someday. So, Aunt Sharon frigs off forever on a hot date and gives me a prezzy along with a cheeky wink. So while Mickey is stomping the shit out of some bugs that have infested our abode, oh, I ponder the thought of starting a family of my own. I've always wanted a family. As its show happens, Aunt Shazza has indeed gifted us the gift of life. We are now proud owners of the Fertilinator. So once we have scrammed our butties off to, <laughs> off to work we go, off the insemination variety. We get to work and we're treated to a cutscene. <laughs> that fertilinator is certainly something. We rearrange four corners as these four corners are now our four corners. The spare room becomes a nursery with a very pregnant Riley. And we finally throw a soiree to end all soirees. And maybe this bitch will finally give birth. And what do you know? The way to induce labor is by throwing a good old fashioned knees up. Finally, I will name the child Small Man Poo. I have to say that when I came to Four Corners, I never expected anything like this, especially so quickly. 
Aunt Sharon is as good as ever after her ordeal. Justice was served to Dylan and Agora, and I'm here with a family of my own at the start of a new and different life. An exciting journey for me has already started, and I'm always looking forward to what will happen next. Here it is, the end of the road. Riley got her man and a child. And after an influx of flies, we can safely say, how boring of a tale of a bog-standard life if I ever did see one. Leave them to fester in their own filth. Anyway, on with Vincent's story now. Vincent's story now. Despite being the wealthy CEO of Gigantor Computer Networks, Vincent Moore has never been lucky in love. While on a business trip to SimCity, Vincent has overseen the finish of JCN's biggest project to date, the SimSat 9000 communication satellite. The launch was flawless, the hands have been shaken and the bonuses are in the mail. Now Vincent eagerly returns his modest mansion in Bitville to see his new girlfriend. Samantha Hayden. Samantha told Vincent she had a big surprise awaiting for him when he got back. Mm, perhaps Vincent's look is changing. Vincent exclaims, Ah, it's good to be finally home after that two-week business trip. <laughs> Who says that? A nerd, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> it's great to finally see Samantha again. I should go and give her a nice peck on the cheek. <laughs> What a nerd. Oh, so we've only been going out with her for three weeks, but she wants to make it official, eh? And she's only bloody gone and planned our wedding. Samantha be like, yeah, Vincent, mate, this is way too fast. Three weeks you've known her and you've been away for two of them. He attempts to let her down gently. However, he's fucked up, hasn't he? As Samantha is like, time off, I was ready to marry you. I thought you loved me. You'll come to realise what a big mistake you've made. Okay. Look at the fucking state of my house. She left it in a right tip. I can't believe she's put up a bloody wedding arch in my back deck and while I was away. And where is my bestie Greg? He's supposed to be looking after the place. Oh, this is Greg, finally back from filming MasterChef. I should ask him and find out where he's been. Why is this place such a mess? All right, just watching telly, are we? Don't mind if I join you, eh? So I attempt to um, cuddle him. You know what, that's what friends are for. However, he's not into it. <laughs> kind of homophobic if you ask me. So I bluntly ask about the mess and he apologises. Then I ask about the arch on the deck and he's like, she had a crazy look in her eye and a big smile. I ain't gonna mess with her. <laughs> what? Oh well, our oh, Greg gives me a new computer. How amazing. And wait, this house is kind of serving. As soon as I got back from SimSat communication satellite launch, Samantha basically tried to get me to marry her. After three weeks of dating, I'd just gotten back from a two-week business trip. It would have been a little too creepy for us to stay together after that, which is fine because Samantha stormed off after I refused to marry her. Vincent really said, nuh -uh, to Samantha there, didn't he? Anyway, look how many simoleons we've got. Fucking rolling in it. Oh, Greg, all the guys are going bowling tonight. Forget Samantha, you need to get out of that house. Hmm, true, I've not bowled in a while. So off to the bowling place that we go, alongside my bestie Greg and... Bloke. Oh well, I was gonna bowl, but that bitch stole my alley, so instead we th just throw a tantrum. I inevitably bowl the bowl and hit the skittles, and I can't help but be drawn to the thought of that Twitter gif. Alas, Greg wants to talk about Samantha, but mate, I really don't want to talk about that right now. And he continues on his non-consensual rant about my ex and calls her a total basket case. Okay, whatever. Suddenly this dude begins to talk. Ah, the swan song between the rect... Recall... Recall the trans... What? Okay, there's no way to... So I don't know how to say this. Ah, a swan song between the recolitrans of love. However, the true crux of the issue thus far unmentions seem prima facie to be pecuniary in nature. I'm not gonna lie, I'm bloody captivated. Who is this dude? Greg's like, Sherman's right, if she'd probably after your simoleons. Hmm, Sherman, eh? But how did Greg understand that? Greg's stupid. Then goes on to say, Vince, don't look now, but the girl at the coffee bar is really cute. You should go and get a cup, dude. Um, 
whatever you say, mate. Vince be like, I'll take a coffee and... Oh, how embarrassing, I lost my number, can I have yours? And then she like gets changed or something. I don't even know what happened, but I guess the pickup line worked. Greg then asks if I got her digits and says, if you're not gonna call a dude, I'd be willing to take the number off of your hands. Um, Greg, actually, I think you'll find that's actually against GDPR, sleazebag. No wonder how everyone went off him after his weird what my Saturday is like interview. Also, may I ask why this random ginger bitch is chatting me up? Greg is done with the bowling and is now like, fellas, who's up for a game of pool? Ah yes, this is what it means to be a real bloke, chatting up birds, having a coffee, playing pool. And look, Naomi even says bye to little old me. Me? Greg is very unsupportive about my new conquest and tells me, you just got out of a relationship, you don't want to get involved with another too soon, so give me a number and I'll get rid of it for you. Um, mate, I'm getting, getting mixed signals here, didn't you tell me to go and get a number? What's going on? Keep dreaming, pal, innit? Sherman has got one of his iconic paragraphs now. I must bid adieu to you comrades. Nebula Galactic will be airing shortly, and Captain Xavier has yet to resolve an imprisonment dilemma with the Natu Bounty Hunters. May the power see you prosper. Did you hear that? It said Xavier? Sherman's kind of slay. Oh my god, guys, what? Wait a bloody secky wacky. Samantha has just walked in with my inverted commas, best friend, Johnny. Johnny Cullen, Johnny bloody Cullen. I can't believe she's with Johnny Cullen. My main business competitor. She was talking about marriage, what, yesterday? This is ridiculous. You know what? Flirting with three girls should show her. No, not one, not two, but three girls to be the target of my charms. I start with this ginger bitch who responds with a, I thought you'd be taller. I float with Angel and she's like, I came here to bowl. <laughs> you bitch. Then I inevitably get rejected by Erica. Embodying the spirit of Vincent, I tell him that they're all ugly bitches anyway. But oh, Samantha. Oh, she saw the shoddy spectacle of my potential love interests and says that's pathetic. It's too late now though. I'm with Johnny now and he knows how to treat a lady. Poor old Vincent. He's all stinky too. Where's my apparent bestie, Greg? He didn't even defend my honour. The twat. I'm going home. And just before I retire to my humble abode, he lets me know that he signed me up for some e-dating service. I'm fucking tastic, mate. It's been a while since I'd gone bowling with the guys. Samantha was there with my competitor, Johnny Cullen. That didn't ruin my evening, but getting shut down by those girls I was trying to flirt with sure did. At least I got the barista's number. She seems quite nice. I'd be like when I get a delivery from Hermes, AKA Avery, and it actually arrives. Spontaneously, I decide it's time for a makeover or a make under as Pod would say. I give him the prudence special. Ah yes, now Vincent is certainly Vincenting. Wait, Vincent wants to get change ready for his date. I guess I was premature in the old makeup department. Alas, I have a fresh new look and time for a date. Off we go to Cliffside Park and why are we watching our sims as one would imagine God would watch upon the servants of Earth? This bitch asks me if I'm good at my shuno. What the fuck did you just call me? But I guess it's bingo for sims. Anyway, we're interrupted as of course bloody Samantha is here. Then some other bitch is, comes up to me, it's kind of prettier than my date, to be honest, and is like, It was great seeing you last night. I got you this tiki torch if you want to make next time even hotter. You have my number if you want to party again. Oh, uh, my lady friend doesn't like that in the slightest. I'm sorry, Vincent. I thought we had something special, but looks like you're just shopping around. And to be honest, I only met you yesterday, so... Like the Spice Girls say, if you want my future, forget my past. If you want to get with me, better make it fast. Oh, I really like Naomi. I should go home and gather my thoughts. So I had my first date with that barista, Naomi. But it didn't go quite as I would have liked. I embarrassed myself badly at my shuno. And this strange girl came up to me and thanked me for a date we never had. Right in front of Naomi. Naomi just stormed off. She did give me a chance to defend myself. 
<laughs> yeah, Naomi, you're a slag. Um, Sherman just calls me out of the blue. Just a reminder, the SimSat 9000 communication satellite will be orbiting over Britville tonight. I would also like to add that our project status is copacetic. Um, what's that mean, mate? Hmm. Anyway, I should try and call Naomi. Try and convince her to give me another chance. But holy shit, guys. We go to work in a helicopter. Helicopter, helicopter, innit? Imagine if it just drove round the road. That would have been really funny, but, you know, it just ascends into the air. I call Naomi after work only to get an answering machine. So after wallowing in self-pity for a while, I decide to check my emails and... Oh, what's this? Some bitch named Sasha wants to meet me at the Arcadian Plaza. She'd be like, I'm sure you would show me a wonderful time. I just love gifts. She'd be like, I'm sure you would show me a wonderful time. No, I need to think of a better voice. Uh, I'm sure you'd show me a wonderful time. I just love gifts. Um... Okay. I do be pondering. How convincing be sad with such a nice house and all this money? He even has a hearty tea. The bloke doesn't even know he was born. So I gussy my pussy for the day. Pussy in bio. Forget Naomi. If she's gonna ignore me over a silly misunderstanding, I best hurry up and go meet Sasha. I don't know why we always get this aerial view. It's kind of pissing me off, but I go and greet my suitor. She'd be like, Hey Vincent, you know I love a man who knows how to use his starch. That outfit must have made a lot of noise in a dryer. <laughs> um, listen love, all I know about starch is pasta. I gets to know Sasha whilst we're out at the gettings to know. She asks if she can try on some clothes. Sure thing love, <laughs> as long as I don't have to buy them, eh? Am I right fellas? She'd be doing a wardrobe montage with all the clothes. Putting on the most basic trackie and saying it's cute. And I have no choice but to agree. Oh, and that dress? That's good too. Oh, Vincent has no backbone. Best to last though, eh? The leopard print garment. This is the best slutty prudence vibes. Reluctantly, Vincent replies to Sasha with a, I guess. Ugh, what boring bloke. Wait a second, that cost me loads of money. Now that she's saying she really likes children. What about you? <sighs> Love, you can't be going around saying things like that. And she's like, I think our kids will be really cute. I let you mull that over. Mull it over? Piss off. Pondering to myself, I quickly realise that this hag is only after my simoleons. I need a way to end this date. As Sherman would say, pecunia ex machinia. Whatever that means. Hang on a minute. If it isn't my old golfing buddy, Dr. Max Oglethorpe. I'll introduce this slag to him. And as a thanks, he gives me a grill. How kind of him giving me his shite. Reminds me of the charity shop by us that has a brand new no fly tipping sign in the window. So once I've purchased myself many a garment, I make my way home. I met this girl named Sasha through Symphonies, e-dating. She was pretty enough, but obviously a gold digger. So I introduced her to my golfing buddy, Dr. Oglethorpe. The doctor seems to like a girl who appreciates the finer things in life, like his bank account. At least Sasha was honest about her intentions. I never really knew what Samantha was thinking at all. I'm pretty sure I miss Naomi. Ah yes, now we're truly serving. I was just about to game, playing, I don't know what shit Vincent would like. He's about to, yeah, play on Hotel Transylvania or some shit. And then his phone rings. Oh. Who else but Alexa Star? She wants to meet. Where else but Don Calamari? Um, Calamari Incantation mentioned. Stupid bitch. However, the bitch hangs up on me when I'm about to tell her my name. <laughs> oh well, I best put on my best bib and tucker, only to end up in my Matrix outfit again for some reason. <laughs> oh well, who cares, Vincent's slaying. I'm off to meet my mystery babe. Interrupted again by trying to tell this bitch my name, after her saying I love coffee. I go and get some coffee, the way we all get coffee, by going behind the counter in Costa. Because you just can't get the stuff. To be honest, I don't even like coffee. I want to try one of those hot milkshakes because they sound really gross. Upon quenching my thirst on, on that hot milkshake, made me need a shite. It was touching cloth. Oh, but the, uh, it goes for a way um, of the urethra variety of cloth. Wait, was that Samantha cackling and running? 
What was all that ruckus? Vincent exclaims. Back to the task at hand, my dainty weighty. So after Alexa says my hair's nice, I'm about to tell her my name, but she's like, go get us some food. Fuck's sake. Well, at least she says my hair looks nice. Hmm. What to order as a millionaire? There's only one choice. Two lobster thermidors, please. <laughs> The thermidors arrive, ready to be scrammed. All of a sudden, this bitch falls asleep in a dindins. Vincent, clearly unaware, be like, Here goes nothing. Finally, a chance to introduce myself properly. My name's Vincent Moore. Pleased to meet your acquaintance. Eventually, she wakens from her slumber. Scarf is off, I would imagine. The owner of Don Calamari's, who I'm assuming is called Don Calamari, because he's the owner of Don Calamari's, gives me a prezi as the bitch fell asleep in her dinner. Um, I, was it his fault? Not to sound ungrateful, but like, you know, I don't like coffee, so. I'd have said that Alexa was a sophisticated lady until she fell asleep in a meal at Don Calamari's. At least I got a free espresso machine from the restaurant, but I really think Alexa needs it more than I do. I wonder if Naomi has a coffee machine of her own at home. <laughs> Who cares about Naomi? Oh, it's an awful shame though. Alexa was actually kind of hot. Oh, here's Greg now, telling me to throw a party. Oh, I feel like he's using me. However, he's talked Naomi into giving me another chance, but under one condition that I must invite Alexa because she may get the hots for his old pal Greg. Apparently I own him one. I don't know, I don't like Greg. Greg Wallace vibes protruding off the bastard. And right on cue, here they are, the ominous black rectangles. We all hit the pool. In the distance, I see Samantha, and she's fiddling with me boombox. And now it doesn't work. But I get electrocuted and I kinda look cool now. But Naomi gives me a back rub. All is cured. Me and Greg, I'm her bestie, have a little cheeky giggle about Samantha. And then Alexa gives me a back rub. Oh, Vince, all these women are after him now. Is this a swingers party? In the spur of the moment, I decide to serenade our Naomi. Oh, she liked that. I sang her, um, sing a song of six pence, a pocket full of pies, four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie. She liked that. We bring the party to its natural end, and oh, Who's this but R. Sherman? I've obtained evidence that Samantha is trying to push Johnny into a quick wedding. Apparently she wants bit tech as much as she wanted JCN. What JCN? Wait, may I ask why do people keep on coming into my house and giving me packages? Okay, so after that pool party, it's clear. I'm all wet when it comes to dating. My stereo imploded and I got a bad electric shock trying to fix it. The party never recovered after that even though I had smoke coming off the top of my head. Serenading Naomi was fun though. I'll have to try something like that again. Wait a minute, Sherman's here. And why does he look like that? Vincent, I've obtained objective evidence which indicates Samantha has established herself as persona non grata via interference with your dating both Naomi and Alexa. <laughs> what the hell, Sherman? Where's my makeup? And she messed with my stereo, that harlot. Oh, Vincent's mind never strays far from thoughts of our Naomi. Oh, I wanna give her a call, but I need my makeup. Can't have her seeing me like this, or pasty-faced like this. However, this time I'll opt for something a little different. Ah yes, kawaii desu name. I desperately ask Naomi, when will I see you again? And she's like, tomorrow when I get off work. And she wants to go to Bollywood. Like, girl, don't you work in Bollywood? You why where you want to work, hang out there too? Getting back into Naomi's good graces have been somewhat stressful. I should hang out at home tonight, put on my pyjamas and relax. What? This bloke is such a nerd. Ooh, I could go a few rounds of video gaming. So I blow off the dust stuff by a copy of Meet the Robinsons and delve into the world of meat. Ah, yes. What's thorough gaming fun? Now time to practice my romance skills in the mirror. Ah uh, yes, we will lip sync to Kate Bush in the mirror. <laughs> Wait guys, is this how one gets the ladies? So Samantha's been interfering with my post her dating days. I wonder if she'll meddle on this date I have with Naomi tomorrow. Samantha isn't doing a very good job of convincing me I made a mistake when I broke up with her. Wow, oh, look at this bastard peacefully slumbering. He's really been tortured by that bitch Samantha. But in my opinion, rightly so. Why is he so rich? There's definitely some exploitation going on here. <laughs> Wait a second. 
Why is this Sherman dude still in my house? Sherman leaves only to inevitably call me after I complete my pissing antics to update me on the status of SimSat 9000 communication satellite. Currently orbiting overhead, we have realigned the central gyroscope compressor after a minor refactory calculations. <laughs> Sherman love, I don't care. But I guess Vincent does care. And he asks Sherman to keep him updated on those compressors. SimSat is gonna take the gigantic computer networks to the next level. Alas, sometimes you do be lying on the wrong crouch. Naomi should be getting off work soon, so off to the alley of the bulls I go. I'm excited. We ask Naomi if we share any interests. After I order some coffee for the lady, then me and my prospective lady friends face off in a darts battle. This girl is amazing. I'm definitely falling for her. I want to take it slow though. Perhaps we could cuddle a little on the couches. Cuddling? Ooh. Things are going so well, so much so that I think it's time we should attempt our first kiss with Naomi. Not here though, maybe out the back on the nice patio area. There's a little more privacy there. I head out back and Naomi is trailing behind me like a bad smell and with that we commence the first of many a kiss. She gifts me a high five for the kiss. Oh, I think I will be partaking in the sport of kissing more often. I had a great time with Naomi tonight, although next time when she asked me to play with her, I should probably say, you win, and save myself some trouble. My consolation cuddle session with her on the couch has made up for the blow to my ego, but it was that kiss that really knocked me off my feet. Wow, I really hope I get to see her again soon. Oh, never has a kiss felt like that. I have to see her again. I almost immediately invite her over. Oh, Vincent Smitten. I put on my lucky knickers and greet her. I offer to take her out somewhere nice. Alas, she is happy enough to scran on the prudence delicacy that is spaghetti and meatballs. Oh, grubs up, love. <laughs> that smells just right. Um, let's dig in. Are you gonna... Are you gonna eat or just stand there? This date is nice, but would be a lot nicer if we were in the hossy tea. If I wasn't so nervous, I'd be relaxing. Too bad I'm nervous. That kiss knocked me off my feet. I think we should try that again and again and again and again. Shut up. Oh, it's all going on in the hossy tea. She now gives me a mask for making out with her. Oh, I'm a lucky guy. Oh, he is just simply smitten. But don't you dare turn off that music. Now, <laughs> that was a date. I really think there's something to Naomi and me, and I really hope she feels the same way. I'm wondering if Samantha is gonna go ballistic, or if she's gonna keep herself distracted with Johnny Cullen. I'm sure I'll find out the worst possible time. I have a quick drink before work, because how else am I be able to make it through the working day? When you're working. But oh dear, it seems that Vincent has become partial to the afternoon tipple potentially even dependent on it. So after downing a few, I get the sudden urge to check my emails. Oh, and what a surprise, it's bloody Sherman. It's kind of annoying me now though. I have fortuitously overheard a tete in which a certain cognizant discussed a connubial union between Samantha and Johnny. Yes, the two are, as Greg would phrase it, tying the knot. Wait, so Vincent wants to invite Samantha over to see if she's getting married just to annoy him. Who cares, man? Just let go. She hasn't ruined your relationship for a while. Grow up, innit? Anyway, here she is now, shouting about how I lost my chance with her. Vince be like, the only way to say it is, get out. <laughs> Mate, you invited her around. I tell her, oh, congrats on your engagement. I hope you're not doing it just to hurt me. Oh, she says. Oh, you're never comp capable of making your own decisions, Vince. Think you can brush me off to go for a poor barista? You're clueless. I mean, she's not wrong. I am making all Vince's decisions for him. And Vince has had enough. You're out of here, bitch. Samantha be like, are you kicking me out for that coffee jockey? <laughs> oh no, you did not just say that. I'll show you, you big jerk. No one treats Samantha Hayden like this and gets away with it. So off the bitch goes to tamper with my stereo. Why does she do that? Does she know that I love that hip hop music so much? She be like, you want to wash your hands of me? Do you? Wash this. This bitch is clearly having a menti bee. She hurts me sink. And then she's like, if you want to bring the heat, 
I brought some matches. Goodbye forever, Vinci and Umskull. Then bloody sets my house on fire. <laughs> then the bastard fireman has the cheek to tell me to be more careful. <laughs> Wasn't even me. Thank goodness that is over. Samantha is a walking disaster, but at least she's gone for good. I don't have to be reminded of her anymore. Trying to receive my package and the delivery bloke's like, must have been a brutal party in here or something. Then the guy's like, dude, you have a great girlfriend. She bought you all this great stuff for you. And there's a note she attached to the guitar. Dear Vince, I love you forever and ever. After meeting you, I'll never be able to think about another guy again. You really ground me and keep me sane. I'm glad, so glad I'm going to be your wife. I can't wait to hear you play some sweet music on this guitar. It plugs right into the stereo. I love you, sweetie. Samantha. <laughs> What's going on? That didn't go so well, but what was I expecting, really? It's odd that she seems so into Johnny, yet she's trying so hard to get back at me. I wonder what Johnny thinks of this, or does he even think about it at all? <laughs> I'm left with a lot of food for thought. And why is Greg here again, may I ask? I'm trying to play on MSN. Greg be like, did you hear about Samantha and Johnny's honeymoon? Me, I really don't care. Even Vince's character said he don't care. You didn't hear about Johnny's company going under and him flying back out here to see what's going on? Apparently due to my success. Eh, whatever, mate. But wait a minute. Greg is going on a date with Alexa. She was so beautiful and he is so... <laughs> Greg! I be eating ding on and of course my beloved Naomi calling me. She wants to meet at the mall. There's a pogo stick there that I just have to jump on. Boing, boing. I head to the mall, meet our Naomi, and I believe I have a few kisses for your lovely arm, Naomi. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Oh, what's this? Samantha, no less. Somehow I knew I wouldn't be able to, able to, able to, able to go out tonight without seeing Samantha. There's going to be an argument tonight one way or another. I might as well be the cause of it. An aerial view of Samantha snogging Johnny. <laughs> Why are they snogging? I thought they'd thought maybe and you know I don't know anyway we both give each other a cheeky slap and Vincent be like I heard you guys had a fairly fairly rocky honeymoon so I'll make you a deal don't even interfere with me and Naomi and I'll return the favor oh here's Johnny finally decides to talk now don't talk to my wife that way Vinny boy mmm those are fighting words. I will poke Johnny and show him how I really feel about him and his so-called wife so before I poke him, I beat up his wife and then beloved Naomi tenderly kisses me before we each take on one of the bastards each. My girl says, um, let that be a lesson, Samantha Hayden. When you mess with Vincent, you're messing with Naomi, hon. And we have a good old snog afterwards. Yeah, we really showed them. The nerve of them. Naomi plans to come over to my place tomorrow instead. I must make my next date with Naomi extra special to make up for tonight's drama. That didn't go very well. Just like Greg would say, you win some and you lose some, dude. <laughs> I think many people say that. Okay, that confrontation between Samantha and Johnny and me didn't go so well. But it's good to know that Naomi can handle herself. She doesn't seem very shaken by this at all. And that's been helping me a lot. Naomi said she'd be here at 6, but I thought she said 8 last night. However, I must rush and practice my guitar so I can play it for her. I should shower, I don't want her running for the woods. I have learned, won't you be my toaster, love, just for Naomi. We watch a bit of telly together and she says, that was an awesome episode. I didn't think her ex-boyfriend would actually kidnap her aunt. Oh, this sounds familiar. Oh, Naomi wants to see my telescope to see the satellite. It's so beautiful, she exclaims. I'm like, it's just a fucking satellite. Anyway, I twang the strings off my guitar to create a rhythm for my beloved. Oh yes, she loves this song. Enough of that though, it's time for the snog of the mouth. And while I'm at it, how about you just move in with me? She's everything I have ever wanted. Oh look, she's joined the family and brought along a hundred thousand simoleons. Oh, lovely jubbly. It's just that ever since I got back from launching the satellite, my luck has been terrible until you came into my life. Naomi tells me that people make their own luck. Let's sit on the lawn and watch the stars. <laughs> Why do I feel like something's gonna happen? 
<laughs> Everything's so perfect right now. A wonderful girl, a clear, beautiful night, romances the, in the air, burning bright and hot. It'll be great to sit on the lawn together and stargaze. <laughs> um, what? This is terrible and with my own satellite. Oh, Naomi, if I plead my case with the Grim Reaper, maybe he will return her to me. I'm gobsmacked, fellas. I didn't see this coming. I plead to the Grim Reaper and he'd be like, Your request intrigues me, mortal. I will give you what you ask, but on one condition. I will return Naomi to you, but you will have to forfeit all your earthly belongings. You must value her than your own worth. Do we have a deal? And you know what? I was too busy writing all that information down that the Grim Reaper said that I missed my opportunity to answer. And I guess we want our money more. Oh, well. The regret of what happened to Naomi will stay with me for the rest of my life. But my entire fortune was too much to risk on something so uncertain. Love is beautiful. What is fleeting? Only Somalians can launch satellite. Oh god, I didn't mean it. I wanted to save her. Not only does Vincent have to live with that decision, I have to live with it too. Bloody hell. This is Naomi's grave site. The satellite that killed her. Uh, the gravestone. And this statue of Naomi that good old death gave me. Vincent always looks on the bright side of life though. There's always someone that was there for Vince throughout it all. Sherman, they grew closer, and closer, and even closer. Oh, I do think that Sherman had something to do with it though. Satellite malarkey, but <laughs> Sherman's bloody maimed up. Vincent, however, can't help but be drawn back to the thought of the one that got away. Yeah, this was a game. Although the stories were short and straightforward, I felt captivated and grossed in the parts of the game, like Dylan hopping in the hot tub, and Naomi's tragic death, all with The Sims 2 way of weighing. I was also amused by the chapter summaries with the pictures of how Riley and Vincent were supposed to look. <laughs> they really got that prudence magic, didn't they? I attempted to make my own family, the Pudences, along with a husband and a daughter of my own. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I get bored so easily when it's free play. I need a good story, oh well. A shite story to sink my teeth into. I'm looking forward to eventually playing all these story series. What wonders await us, eh? Anyway, as always, thank you for watching. Look after yourselves and until next time.